Hey guys, so in today's video I'm just going to be showing you some of my plants that I have. As you can see behind me I've got some I've just gathered out of my collection. Um, now most of these plants are going to be in that category of plants that are easy to care for. So for those of you who want something to start out with and you're not overly confident with plants or you're new to plants, watch the video because I might show a couple of species you might be interested in. However, some of these species are just in this video because they're kind of favourites of mine. Um, so yeah, this whole selection of plants kind of comprises of either plants that are easy to care for or I've just thrown a few of my personal favourites in that might not be as easy but you might want to try them anyway so I'll throw them in the video. Honestly it was pretty hard um, narrowing it down to just what's behind me here because I have so many plants and I kind of wanted some decent selection in the video and I'm kind of running out of room <laughs> to show them all off here so um, yeah, we'll jump into it. Now, prayer plants consist of a few different um, genuses, mainly Calatheas and Marantas. Uh, so this particular one is a type of Maranta. This one's the Maranta Leconura. Um, apologies if I pronounce some of these names wrong. I don't actually have to ever say them out loud for any reason usually, so I might not pronounce them 100%, but I'm pretty sure that's how it's pronounced. So yeah, Maranta Leconura, I'm pretty sure it's pronounced. Um, this is one of my favorites of the Marantas. It's probably one of the easier ones to care for. Uh, prayer plants, I wouldn't say uh, the easiest house plant in the world, but they're not the hardest either. Um, mainly because they do have some issues during winter when the humidity gets a bit low. So this one here is a Calathea Bertel Maraxi. Um, these ones are pretty easy as far as a Calathea goes. I don't really have too many dramas with these. Even during winter, they just kind of go a bit dormant and don't grow much at all. But other than that, they're not too bad. So this one's a Calathea illustris. Um, again, kind of medium care. Kind of has the typical Calathea issues during winter sometimes when the humidity drops quite a lot. Uh, they can get browning around the leaves when that happens. That's kind of a Calathea thing. Uh, it doesn't have it happen to it that badly though, compared to some other species. Like this particular one here. This is a Calathea Grey Star. And as you can see at the moment, it's not looking its greatest because we've just had our winter. Winter's probably just finishing up right now. It's still a little bit cold, but I can tell it's getting warmer. So we're getting into our spring here. But yeah, it's not looking at its greatest. Most of it's smaller leaves at least. That one's half brown. That one's got brown tips. Um, yeah, it's had a lot of leaves go brown during winter, and that's perfectly normal for this particular Calathea. This one is especially prone to browning of the leaves, uh, pretty much because its leaves are much thinner than a lot of the other species I was showing you before. Um, so it's more dependent on humidity. So yeah, lack of humidity, the leaves, the leaf edges just go brown. That combined with winter, the plant's dormant, so it's not growing any new leaves. So the current leaves just kind of take a bit of a bashing with the low humidity. But that's just normal for these. You kind of just have to deal with these not looking their greatest during winter. Once spring hits, it'll start popping up new leaves again and it'll look great in no time. That is just kind of one of those things you have to cop with Calatheas. They do just kind of look a bit average during winter and then they bounce back in spring. This is one of my other favorite Calatheas. This is a Calathea Zebrina. Uh, kind of a medium sized Calathea. They don't get overly tall like, like the Silver Star, but they have really vibrant patterning on them. They're really, really nice. They got thicker leaves than a silver star. Um, they're a bit more compact. So they're not as prone to browning during winter. As long as they don't get crazy cold and the humidity is not ridiculously low, they're pretty good. Calatheas really don't appreciate being overwatered either. They just can't handle it. Overwatering, the tips of the leaves just go brown and they just do not do well at all. So you do have to kind of keep them on a bit of almost a watering schedule and monitor the soil when watering. Let them dry out between a water, give them another water. Just don't keep the soil constantly moist because they will get brown tips as well. Other than that, Calatheas are anywhere from a medium to a high indirect lighting sort of plant. Um, they do great in most rooms, provided they at least get medium indirect light. High indirect light, they'll just grow a bit quicker. So next plant on the list is the Peace Lily, also known as the Spathophyllum. Um, these are probably one of the most popular house plants worldwide. Pretty much any nursery or garden centre you go to has Spathophyllum all year round because they're an evergreen plant, they can grow all year round. Um, like I said, winter they just grow a tiny bit slower, but they're still going to grow even during winter. So they're an amazing house plant, they do well in anywhere from high lighting to medium lighting to even low lighting. Provided it's indirect lighting, they can't handle full sunlight. 
I think I'll just say that, I'll say this now for every plant in this video, no, so I don't have to keep repeating every time I pick up a new plant. None of them can handle direct full sun all day long. At the best, a little bit of morning sun or a little bit of afternoon sun because it's less intense is fine for most of these plants, but none of them can do full sun. They're not full sun type plants. So I just put that out there now so I don't have to keep saying it every time because I don't want to sound like a broken record. Um, but yeah, so spathophyllums or peace lilies can tolerate anywhere from high, medium to low indirect lighting. So they're very versatile with uh, whatever sort of conditions you have in your home. As you can see, they get to a decent size. You know, they fill up a room quite nicely. And during uh, spring and autumn, they will actually push out flowers as well. Um, so they get a white lily type flower. Mine doesn't have any right now. It just lost its over winter. It had some coming into winter and as winter progressed, it kind of just dropped them off. Uh, I'm expecting it to push some more flowers out maybe in the next few weeks to the next month or so. So if you want something that also flowers, these are a great one. And I say that because some of these other indoor plants are capable of flowering, but usually with a lot of them, like for example with Dracaenas, when they flower, the flower is so nutrient dependent, it just drains the plant of all nutrients and kills the plant. So it's recommended to cut the flowers off when you see them. These ones don't have that issue with their flowers. You can let them flower and they'll look great still. They're not going to have any overly bad effects on the plant, so it's fine to let them flower. One thing with Spathophyllum though, uh, that does kind of make them just a little bit more, uh, I guess, annoying in one aspect at least, is the watering. All around they're a very easy plant, they're not hard to keep, most people can keep them no problem. It's just where they come from. They're a tropical plant native to Central America, native to rainforests. And they're living in um, the understory of the rainforest, so it's very shadowed and shady. The soil is always quite damp. And often they're found at river edges as well, so they, they always got access to constant water. Um, and that's just how they've adapted to be and they cannot handle dry soil and they'll let you know about it They actually are very dramatic um, And very responsive to water Like if I forget to water my peace lily and the soil gets too dry Literally within a few hours. It'll go from looking like this To looking completely flat and wilted. I've come home thinking my cat's been sitting in my plant sometimes because it's been completely flat I've watered it Within an hour or two, it's standing back up again. It responds very quickly to water, but it also um, is very dramatic when it doesn't get water. But I guess that's kind of the beauty of them as well, because they let you know when they need watering, they start wilting quite quickly. It, but it's not a big deal, as long as you don't leave them wilted for any length of days, and you get onto it and water them when you notice they're wiltering, they'll bounce back within the hour. Next one of my favorite plants, it's also a very easy one for beginners, is the Pilea peperomoides also known as the Chinese money plant, or the friendship plant, or the, pa or the pancake plant, um, the flying saucer plant. They've got a lot of nicknames because of their round leaves. Uh, they do look very similar to a peperomia, but they're actually not a peperomia. Um, so yeah, these are a very easy to care for plant as well. So these guys are native to China. Uh, they're found in the Sichuan province and the Yuan province. Um, again, never had to pronounce these names before, so I might be doing it wrong, but Google it. <laughs> um, so yeah, these guys are actually found in very high altitudes, usually growing on the edges of like mountains and rock ledges and stuff. Um, because of that, they're not growing in like constantly damp soil like rainforest plants. They're up at high altitudes, usually growing between rocky crevices on rock ledges and things like that. So they don't get much water and when they do get water, it drains away quite quickly. Um, they're not in a constant like moisture type environment. Um, because of that, they've adapted to not need constant water and they become very hardy. They've got quite thick, fleshy leaves that are full of water. So if you forget to water these sometimes, it's not a big deal. They're not going to really suffer from it. Now these are only little seedlings. They do get quite decent size to them and they look really good when they get bigger. They'll get much longer stems as well. Uh, and if you rotate them evenly every other day, so they get even light, you'll get kind of like a perfect globe of discs, if that makes sense. They look really, really cool when they're like that. Um, they also propagate quite easily. The mother plant will just send out little baby plants out the side of its own stem, down to the, pretty much down at the base. And you can just either leave them grow or you can break them off and plant them in another pot if you want to. Lighting requirements for these is pretty versatile too. Anywhere from high to medium indirect light, they'll do quite well. And because of the way they've adapted to not sit in constantly damp soil, because of how they grow in the wild, 
you do want to maybe give them a soil that has decent drainage so I would advise mixing perlite in with their soil so they're not constantly sitting in moisture because that's just not how they've adapted to be they're used to drying out so let them do it okay so next one on the list is the Schifflera falsarelia um, so being a Schifflera it's actually a type of umbrella tree it just has really skinny leaves when it's small like this they will get a bit thicker when it gets taller this can get two to three meters tall um, so these are another easy one same sort of care as any other type of Schifflera um, if you go back and watch a video I did purely on Schifflera's, I'll pop a link to it at the top of the screen, you can go and watch that. All the information in that video, the care for all those, the care for the other two Schifflera's I talk about apply for this one as well. So you can go ahead and watch that video if you want to get more into depth with this specific one. But yeah, so the Schifflera falsarelia, uh, again medium to high indirect lighting, they do quite well. They can't handle direct sun like I said with everything else, these have quite thin leaves so they'll burn even quicker. Um, Schifflera's, like I mentioned in my other Schifflera video, don't like to dry out too much. You do want to keep that soil at least at a slightly moist level at all times if you can. Uh, they just don't handle being dry for any length of time. That aside, they're pretty great if you want something a little bit taller in your house. Next on the list of easy plants, of course, it's the pothos. I couldn't do a video about easy plants without putting pothos in there. Probably one of the easiest things in the world to keep. They're definitely the most uh, durable and adaptable as well. Uh, there's many different species. So this one's a golden pothos. And I've also got a smaller uh, neon pothos here as well. Um, I did a, a video a little while ago where I replanted my frog terrarium and I just added some more golden pothos to the terrarium. That's where this is from. It's some of that pothos. So you can split it and propagate it quite easily. Um, I'll pop a link to that video at the top of the screen if you want to go watch that one as well. And this is another pothos I have here. Uh, so this is a satin pothos, this is just a little cutting though, um, but it will take off once spring hits. So, kind of excited for that I guess. Like I'm generally excited for spring, as you can see. This is nothing, this is like a portion, small portion of my collection. And when spring hits, these plants just go nuts, so I'm really looking forward to spring. But yeah, pothos are very easy, they can go anywhere from bright indirect lighting to medium to low indirect lighting. Uh, they do just do better in high indirect lighting if possible, they just grow a bit quicker, they get much bigger leaves. And if you're going to keep a, a neon pothos, or even any sort of variegated pothos, again, high lighting is preferred for them, otherwise they just tend to lose their variegations and go dark green. So they're a pretty versatile plant as well, you can have them either growing up a moss pole like this, or you can have them in a hanging basket, just dangling down. They're a very popular, easy to keep house plant. They also do well in terrariums. As I just said, I did one in my terrarium. They're pretty yeah, adaptable to those sort of conditions as well. So pothos are from the Solomon Islands. Uh, so again, another tropical plant, which do great in your house. And they've become probably, again, one of the most, well, like one of the most popular, commonly kept house plants around, I'd say. So yeah, pothos, another easy one. So next one on the list is a fiddle leaf fig. And uh, there's two types I've got here. These are the main two types you'll see available to you. This one is the Ficus lyrata. And this one here is the Ficus lyrata bambino. Um, the care is exactly the same for the both of them. Just the bambino gets much smaller leaves, but its leaves are much closer together and it just gets more of them. Where the Ficus lyrata gets huge it basically grows into a proper tree sort of size plant it'll get leaves much bigger than what it's currently got even on this one this is only a little one now these are not an easy one uh, i just put them in this video because i quite like them and, and just wanted to show them off i guess i don't know but uh yeah ficus lyrotas they're a little bit sensitive um to the lighting and watering requirements if they're not getting the right amount of lighting they're not a forgiving plant like everything else i've already spoken about um, they're prone to dropping their leaves if they're unhappy, whether they're not getting enough light or whether they're being overwatered um, or over fertilized, they will drop their leaves. They also don't like being moved around much. So when you get a ficus lyrata or a ficus lyrata bambino, um, make sure you've got a spot for it that is already adequate for that plant. Don't just kind of play a guessing game with them and try it in this room for a few weeks and oh, it's not doing that good, I'll try it over there. You're gonna just kill it doing that. They hate being moved around from one condition to another. So you need to find a spot that you know has the right lighting for them before you even get one. That being said, once they've settled and they're in a spot that they're getting the right lighting and they've settled, they don't really have too many issues. 
I would say the main one is over watering. You do want to let them dry out a little bit between watering. Um, but again, you don't want the soil to go 100% dry all the time between watering. You want it to just get to that point where it's almost dry, but there's the ever so slight little bit of dampness left. Because they've got quite large leaves that they have to fill with water, pump water through to keep hydrated. And so they are kind of demanding on the water. They just, they need that, but at the same time, over watering these guys, they kind of react to it quite dramatically as well. Plants like this with big leaves, you also want to wipe the leaves down every now and again because they, they just gather dust on them and that stops them photosynthesizing properly and it inhibits their growth quite a lot. So next favorite plant of mine that's also quite an easy one is the Dracaena. That's this big guy sitting here and I've also got a smaller one which I've got elsewhere. I just, no point having them both here. I've got a big one here. Dracaenas are another easy one. I did a video on them a while ago. I'll pop a link to it up top of the screen if you want to see more in depth of that. They're native to tropical Africa and Central America. So this particular one's the Dracaena masangina, uh, and this one's native to tropical Africa and Central America. I'm not gonna talk too much about them because I have actually done a video going into depth about them, so you can go watch that one if you wanna learn more about them. But basically, similar to everything else, medium to high indirect lighting, low indirect lighting, they're gonna go very, very slow with the growth, but they can deal with it. Don't need to be watered that often. You can let them dry out completely between watering because they've got such a thick stem. It holds water in there, so they don't need watering as regular as say a Spathophyllum or a um, Schifflera does. You just want to be diligent of wiping their leaves down because they are in that kind of class where they have big leaves and they gather dust a lot. So wipe the leaves down. Other than that, they're quite easy to care for and they do get reasonably tall, so if you want a big tall plant in your house, they're a great option. So probably one of my uh, other all-time favourite plants is the Monstera. Now I'm just kind of saying Monstera even though there's different types because I like all the Monsteras. Uh, this one here is the Mini Monstera, technically known as the Raphidophora tetrasperma. I have behind me here, I'm not going to pick it up because it's behind everything else and it's kind of big and it's branching out throughout all these other plants, so I don't want to um, knock everything over, but uh, this is the Monstera deliciosa behind me. You can see they get these nice big leaves with the venestrations. This is considered small, to be honest. They get massive. Um, yeah, they've got one big leaf there. The other leaves are kind of behind this um, Schifflera, and I've got more leaves down the bottom. You probably can't see them, but it's still got some growing to do. And then I've also got this one. So this is the Monstera adansoni. Quite like this one as well. Uh, these are a great type of Monstera if you want a vining Monstera. These and the mini Monstera are great vining plants. Technically, the Deliciosa is a vining plant too, but because it's so big, um, most people don't have this sort of house where this can really vine much. So yeah, they usually just kind of keep them in a pot and let them just get kind of lush and bushy looking and they trim them back where when you have something like this at a Sonai or a mini Monstera, it's obviously tiny compared, compared to that, so you can let it vine up a pole or something. So Monsteras can go in anything from high to medium indirect light. They do quite well. Well draining soil is recommended for them, so mix some perlite or pumice in with your soil if you can. Let them dry out between watering. They're not overly water dependent, so if they dry out for a few days between watering, no big deal. Easy propagators, same process as, pop, as propagating a pothos. Just snip a stem below a node, pop it in some water, let it grow some roots, and then plant it up. Pretty straightforward. I also did do a video on the mini monstera, so if you want to learn more details about that plant, go back and watch that video as well. But yeah, another great one for beginners, the monstera. Now when we're talking about easy plants, I can't leave out peperomias. Uh, I've got a few, but I kind of just wanted to show this one off, I suppose. This is a watermelon peperomia. You can tell how it got that name because it, the patterning on the leaves looks like a watermelon. Um, so these are another easy one because they, they got very thick, succulent type leaves with a very th like thick, waxy cuticle. They can retain water quite well. So you don't need to be on a very strict watering schedule with peperomias. They're pretty good at handling a dry out if you leave them dry out for a few days. It's not a big deal for them. So these guys do quite well in medium indirect light. Bright indirect light's fine too. Sunlight, not a great idea for these at all. I prefer to have these in no direct sun if possible. Um, but yeah, anywhere from medium to bright indirect light, they do quite well. 
Now, peperomia is a kind of a very broad thing to talk about because there's so many different types and they're all so different looking from each other. That's why I'm just talking about the watermelon peperomia because I can't cover peperomias as a species like I can with Spathophyllum or Dracaenas because they're all very similar to each other in some way or another throughout their genus list. But peperomias vary so much. So I'm mainly talking about the watermelon variety. Um, and there's various other species of peperomia which have the same kind of rounded leaves like the watermelon peperomia and they grow in a very similar fashion. They're going to be similar to this, but I've seen other types that have completely different structure, different leaf structure, different growth cycle, everything. So yeah, watermelon peperomia, another good beginner's plant. Last one on my list is the philodendron super atom. Uh, I've actually got this one outside, but you can keep it indoors as well. It does fine either way. Um, like a lot of philodendrons are uh, bright indirect light to medium indirect light even low indirect light these will do fine for you because it's such a dark green type of philodendron so it can handle low indirect lighting uh, it's very compact and kind of thick it's got like a really thick stem um, it kind of looks like a split leaf philodendron it's got the same sort of shaped leaves and growth sort of structure but it's like someone took a split leaf philodendron and made it short and fat and made the leaves kind of crinkly as well. So yeah, it's very similar to caring for a, a split leaf philodendron if you've had one of those. It's just kind of the short stockier version if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, these do great. You don't have to water them all the time if they dry out for a while, not a big deal. It's got such a thick, um, bulky stem that it can handle no water for a while. These do get a massive root system, so uh, you do want to repot them once a year if you can. Just up the pot size by about one inch each year. So go from an eight inch to a nine inch, then a 10 inch each year. Uh, because yeah, they're, they're kind of prone to getting root bound quite quickly when they're growing well, because the, their root system is proportionately huge compared to the size of the plant that it's attached to sometimes. I'll probably be repotting this one, even though this pot looks big enough, its roots are starting to come out the bottom of the pot in some places and yeah it's getting to the point where it might be root bound soon so I do want to repot it. So I've got this one on my balcony it's in a spot that does get fairly low lighting so it's not growing crazy fast if I were to move it somewhere else it might grow a bit quicker I kind of like it at this size so that's why it's in a lower lighting setting it's still doing great though um, and yeah you can keep this indoors if you want to same story low indirect light to medium indirect light high indirect light will grow very very quickly um, but that's up to you what you want to do with that I suppose but yeah they're very easy and versatile well that's basically it guys hope you guys enjoyed my video about some of my plants that I have and I hope I've inspired someone to go and get some plants so before I go guys if you've enjoyed this video leave a like Instagram's down below if you'd like to follow me there don't forget to bing that notification bell so you guys know when I upload new videos until then I'll see you in my next video bye